guys welcome back to my channel if you're new thank you for coming if you're my returning subscriber continue watching with me don't you forget to watch my ads and subscribe and let's get started today we're making some alu or potato puri it is simple and easy to put together i'm sifting two cups of all-purpose flour into my bowl then i'm going to add quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder i did make some puri before using the yellow split peas i'm going to leave the link for that in the description box below with all other ingredients combine them well making sure that all the dry ingredients are well incorporated at this time i'm going to use some vegetable oil you can also use some butter or also some vegetable shortening and i like to use warm water to mix my dough mix it until it forms a dough ball but what you want to do is use a little bit of water at a time because i'm not going to tell you in the description box how much water i use all right just use a little at a time until you form that dough ball mix it in just like this and at this time you can form a dough ball and you can just cover it and let it rise i would flatten mine pour a little oil into my hands and just rub it right over the top and mash it in so knead it for about three long minutes and here is where i'm going to pour my oil and just mash it in then i'm going to use a wet paper towel and cover my dough and let it sit for 20 to 25 minutes or you can also use a damp towel so while that is doing its thing, let's go to our filling. I have some English potatoes here and I'm going to peel them. Once I peel them, I'm going to cut them and just wash them thoroughly. Place them into a pot with water along with some salt and let them come to a boil. Once they boil and they are fork tender guys, then it's time to remove them. Place them into your dish and immediately you want to take that potato masher and mash your potato no butter no milk nothing so just mash these potatoes right away mash them until they become smooth and nice and guys if you're making this for a party i'm going to tell you just make sure you get some extra dough because your guests are not going to stop at two or three. They're going to want all. Trust me on this. Once they're done mashing, I did prepare some onion, garlic, some chives and some parsley along with some table pepper. The pepper is now hot. Let me warn you guys. Not because you see that color red in there means that I have a lot of pepper. No, it's not hot. It's a lot of pepper, yes, indeed, but it's not hot, okay? So I'm going to add this mixture into my potato along with some ground cumin powder. And you want to put as much as you want, all right? Because the cumin powder, you know, change the whole dynamic into this recipe. Believe you me, it takes this recipe to another level. And you want to taste as you go what i'm going to do is add some complete seasoning into this and mix it well this potato has a little more moisture than the yellow split peas when you're doing it so don't be afraid just make sure that you use a lot of flour when you're rolling so that it wouldn't stick to your countertop so once it's done mixing it is time for me to start boiling out my dough so that I can have some equal pieces and let me show you how it is done so right over to the dough at this time you can weigh your pieces so that you can have the same size of puri I am so accustomed to doing these guys that I can cut them you know from my hand just eyeball them and they're gonna be just fine so at this time you can see that you have a very good mixture here Now what I'm going to do is flour my surface. And just single out my dough into equal pieces. 
Don't do it like this if you don't have the average, guys. So I'm going to make six pieces from this dough. Just like this. And now what we want to do is to roll them into small circular shape. You're not going to get the direct circles, right? But that's okay because this is not the final product here. We're just trying to get the filling into the center of the dough. Place the dough in the palm of your hand, just like this, and put a generous amount of potato filling into the dough. Once you do this, you want to just gather the edges together, squeeze them tightly, making sure that there are no seepage there for the filling to pass through. Squeeze them and just twist the edge. Tuck it in and there you have a nice little round dough just like this this is another method guys where if you're not comfortable squeezing the dough in the palm of your hand then just put it on top of the countertop take your time and use both hands and just squeeze them together squeeze them however you know squeeze those edges well However you know to do it, just so that you would make sure that there are no seepage. Just like so. This is so simple and easy to make, guys. I just love to put my hands in flour. Yes, I can do this all day. So once it's done, we have six dough here filled and we're going to wet a paper towel and place it right over the top you can use a plastic you can also use a damp cloth and let it sit again for another 15 minutes 15 minutes is up so i'm going to pour some oil into a dish along with some ghee you can also use some butter or some vegetable shortening or you can also use just the oil alone so it's time for rolling at this time i have my roti pan or tower as we will call it over the fire there but i did turn the heat down to low i want the pan to get hot but not with too much of heat so roll your dough very thin guys use a lot of flour do not let it stick to the countertop and do not apply much pressure to the dough you don't want it to burst make sure that you roll the edges and they are well thin and nice and that the filling goes right through to the end As you can see how thin it is here I'm going to remove it and place it right onto my roti pan you can see from all indication that the potato mixture has been rolled right through to the edges so once the roti is being cooked or the puri has been cooked for one minute then I'm going to flip it over and it's time for me to oil it so I'm gonna take my enamel cup guys and I'm gonna just touch it into that oil and just base the top of my puri press in the ends to make sure that they're well cooked I have the container here or the dish here with the oil and the ghee just so that it can melt a little from the heat yeah and just then we just want to just press and you know after pressing then we're going to flip our puri again. It doesn't take long to cook. This puri takes just about three minutes to cook. All right. Then we're going to base the other side. Making sure that we press the ends. And after another minute and a half, we're going to remove our puri.
just a simple glide. Flip it again, then remove it. And here is another one. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of steam coming out. Once you're getting that steam coming out, you just press that hole where the puri has the steam coming out and then you're gonna see it's rising there. This is how you know you got a good puri, guys. Flip it again. Oil the other side. While we're oiling, the other side is cooking for another minute. And this is what our puri looks like guys it's tasty let me tell you you can't go wrong with this we usually make it for dinner sometimes or for breakfast in the morning very early you get up and you just mix your roti quick time and as we would say in Guyana especially if you're from the country it's a belly full all right flip it over then flip it again making sure that it's well cooked Place it onto a plate with paper towel. And here you have it, guys. Our aloo potato roti is done. Tasty. So, guys, you can't go wrong with this. What you want to do is just cover them to keep them warm, either with a paper towel or with a kitchen towel. And this is what it looks like. So give it a try, guys. It's not hard. It's easy. It's tasty. Make sure you have enough for the family. And yes, don't you forget to subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Enjoy.